Welcome to the Live Tutor Zoom Walkthrough Tutorial. To start, you're going to want to make sure that you're logged into eTutoring. Next, make sure you click on the Clock In button. You'll notice that when you've clocked in, it shows the time that you clocked in at and the button turns red. This is really important because you're the only person who can clock in when you're signed into eTutoring. The clock in and clock out buttons are how your coordinators tell when you logged in and when you logged out of the site. In other words, they're used to tell when you're working and when you're not. Next, click on Live Tutoring. And then you'll come to your online tutoring session page. Now, it's important to note here that each session has a date, a time, its own unique Zoom link, and a link that says start Zoom meeting. You're going to want to go to the link for the meeting that you actually want to start, make sure the times and the dates are correct, and click on that. Now, as you can see, this open Zooms up. Hopefully by now you've already downloaded the Zoom app, so you can click allow here. When you do that, you should see this screen. Now, hopefully this doesn't throw you. Ignore the start 3.15 a.m. time. That's the, actually the time that your meeting was created. This also might say 12.15 or 1.15 or whatever, but you can ignore that. The important part is that the time next to your name, which is where synchronous T is right now, matches and the date matches. It also says, if you are the host, sign in to start this meeting. Well, you are the host. So the first thing you have to do here is sign in. And this is the email address your tutor account on eTutoring Online was created with. It's very important that you sign in to Zoom with the same account. Then click on sign in. And then you'll notice that this screen pops up. So the first thing that you want to do is click on share. And then I'm going to share my whiteboard because I'm definitely going to show you some of those features today. And then click on share. I'm going to move things around a little bit because this doesn't really suit my setup here. Okay, so as you can see, I've got the whiteboard out now, but it's not really optimized for the experience. So I'm going to go ahead and extend this. And you can just click and grab these things, which is great. And move them around. Okay, and I also want to make sure that my participants panel and my chat panel are showing. So I'm going to open my chat panel and my participants panel. You can put these basically wherever you want. Your participants panel shows you who's in the panel. It's also a place where you can unmute. It also has a bunch of options at the bottom. Yes, no, go slower, go faster. These are indicators to the students, and students have these buttons too, so they can use them as well. You also have thumbs up, thumbs down, um, clapping, coffee break, and away. This away button can be handy. If you click on it, it will show students when they come in that you're away. Just make sure that when you come back, you clear it. And you can do that by clicking on clear all in the corner here. So as you can see, I also have chat up. One thing you're going to want to do is make sure that you clear the chat and that you're allowing participants to chat with everyone publicly. That's for the purpose of the recordings. And then you just type messages here. hit enter and they pop into the group chat. If you're working with a student on the whiteboard, the first thing you want to do is go down to more and make sure that you click on enable annotation. What this does is allows the student to also use all of these tools up here. If you don't do that, they can't use the tools and only you can. So make sure you do that right away if you're using the whiteboard. And if it says disable attendee annotation, that means you already have it on, so you don't need to do anything in that case. Now, one of the more complicated things that you're going to be using in the Zoom room is the whiteboard, which is this entire space. And it's the first thing that I opened up. 
You can write text. You can draw, and you can draw with any number of things. This squiggly line is a pencil that lets you draw for yourself. There's a line tool. And notice that the color here, you can change that, and it's a f it applies to the next item that you draw. You can draw on a filled rectangle, a shaded rectangle, etc. So those are all the shapes that you can do. Stamps are handy for pointing things out to students, like, yes, that's right. Or, no, we need to do more work on that part. And Spotlight, I kind of like the arrow one. What it does is it shows, as you can see, a big red arrow pops up and says, look here. Um, but you can also use the Spotlight feature. And then sort of you just drag it around and sort of show the exact section you're talking about. Then, of course, is the eraser. And it's a nice and intuitive. You just click on the thing that you want to erase, and it erases. Format affects pretty much everything. So the stamps are the only tools that have preset colors. But you can change the color of pretty much anything else. Just remember that it applies to the next item that you draw. You also have undo, which undoes the last thing that you did, and redo. Then, of course, you can clear the board. You can clear all the drawings, just my drawings, or the viewer's drawings. You can also share your desktop, share your screen, share other browsers. You can share your sound. So there are a lot of options for what you can do while you're sharing. Now at the end of your shift, you can just go to the corner and X out Zoom. If you X out the whiteboard, it just stops sharing the whiteboard. So you want to X out Zoom. And now this is very important. What you want to do is leave the meeting. You don't really want to end meeting for all. The reason for that is if for any reason on the same day you need to come back into your Zoom room and have students work with you, if you say end meeting for all, the link won't work. The same meeting that you worked with students in previously in the day won't open again. So, but I think that the safest option here, therefore, is leave meeting. Then it will close out. You'll get back to your initial Zoom screen. You can X out. And then you want to make sure you return to eTutoring. It's helpful if you have multiple tabs open. When you're done, you're going to want to make sure that you click on Clock Out before you log out. And then click on Log Out.